Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for another journaling on a budget starting from scratch video. And today we are going to do dry embossing. There's embossing where you use um, ink and you sprinkle embossing powder on it and you heat it up and it it's melt it's plastic and it melts and that's called embossing. But dry embossing is where you make your paper stand up all on its own, like this heart here. So I am going to show you how to do this. And I went ahead and I made this paper on purpose. I made it very wrinkly um, because I just wanted that look. But it's not going to necessarily turn out looking like that. I just, that's the way I wanted this piece of paper to, to work. And when I was testing this, um, I was thinking because I had put it on here, I wanted to do it on a belly band in our book. So we're also going to do a page in our book today. Because I do get carried away with techniques and sometimes forget to work in the book. So, um, but I looked through my books, my book at all the belly bands that I had, and like this is one of the belly bands here. This is going to be a belly band that we made, and it's a fold out belly band. But I, you know, I don't really want it on there. But then I saw this is a side tuck that we did, and I know it's a side tuck because we reinforced this side. So it's gonna go on here like this, but I thought this would still be pretty to emboss on because it is plain. Um, and so I just thought that that would look nice. So this is what we're gonna do our dry embossing on, and then we'll come back to this page and we will work on this spread. So for dry embossing, what you need is an embossing folder. And, um, obviously, we didn't buy any embossing folders, but we're going to make our own. So, what I'm going to show you how to do is, the first thing that I did, and here's another one that I just did. You can do them in any kind of shape. But, um, I cut out a heart out of a piece of paper, because I'm not good at drawing a heart from scratch. And my cardboard needs to stay flat, so I don't want to fold my cardboard in half. So, I just folded a piece of paper in half and cut out a heart. And now I am going to trace the heart onto my cardboard. And it doesn't look like my pen is working very well, but it will put a dent in there. So I should be able to see where I need to cut. Oops, cut off a little bit there. There. Okay, so I've drawn a heart on my cardboard that you can't see because my pen doesn't work but there is a dent in there and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut around the heart now the first thing I'm going to do you can use an exacto knife to do this I find cutting um rounded shapes with an exacto knife a little bit hard so I'm going to use my scissors but if you want to you can just cut this heart out with the exacto knife but you want to keep it nice and smooth both the outside edge and the heart itself so you don't want to you know, like be running off the edge and making this all messy. You want to keep both of them as flat as you can. So I'm going to use a scissors. And because this is cardboard, I'm not going to be able to go in the middle. And if I tried to go in the middle, I would probably mess up one or the other. So I'm just going to cut straight up to the point of the heart. And then I'm going to go from there. Now, like I said, the one thing that we want to do is we want to try and keep it nice and smooth. So start with your scissors as far back as you can because that will give you the longest cut. Cut until you need to move your scissors and then try and go all the way to the back of your scissors again so that you can go a little bit further and just stay on the line. Take your time. You can use this over and over and over so you don't want to hurry to do this. You want to just take your time and do it as best as you can. Okay, now I want a nice point there, so I'm really going to try and get my scissors in there to make that a point. And then again, just nice and slow, staying on the lines, staying steady with my scissors, not going chop, chop, chop. And we're just got to get to the other end. And now you may say, well, that's not an embossing folder, and you are, you are right, it's not but it will work like an embossing folder. So there we go. So now I'm gonna just kind of flatten out the edges of my cardboard here. I have a little bit sticking out there, so I'm just gonna kind of pull that off. And there we go. So there is one piece. 
in an embossing folder, when you buy an embossing folder for dry embossing, they fold in half and you have a negative and a positive that fit together and press your paper. And that's exactly what we've just done here. Now the one thing that I'm going to do is, is I'm going to trim off the smallest amount on this heart, just a sliver, so that it gives your paper a little bit of a, a place to fit between the negative and the positive. And if you can try and stay on your heart and go at least to the halfway point, it works a little bit better. Now, I'm not going to go right to that point. I'm going to go just inside that point because I want to trim off a little bit of the, the point also. So this is just the little sliver that I have cut off. And I'm going to I'm gonna turn it over because for me it's easier to work on this side. So I'm going to turn it over and do the same thing on this side. And again, just the smallest sliver. But, oops, see, in both of them I, I ran off right there in that same spot. Trying to stay on your cardboard to get that nice little sliver all the way around. And like I said, this takes a little bit of time, but this is something that you can use over and over so long as you don't lose it. Because my original one that I did as my test sample, I can't find it anywhere. So there we go. I'm not going to pull that off. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of, there we go. Just make sure that I get that cut off. So there we go. We have a heart. I have a I really have a point right there, and I don't want that point, so I'm going to just barely round that. There we go. So now we have our heart, our positive, and our negative. And the one thing that's nice about using like a, a box like this instead of, instead of having a piece of cardboard that's just regular cardboard on both sides is that you know which way these fit together. And that, that makes it nice because that way you can fit them back together. And so we're, they're going to fit together just like that. Now what we're going to do is we are going to just dampen our paper just a little bit. I just have an old hairspray bottle. This one has a nice fine mist. You want a fine mist. And we're going to emboss a heart down here at the bottom. So I'm just going to just do, and don't overdo it because you don't want to rip your paper, but just a fine mist on this side and a fine mist on this side, and there we go. That's it, we don't need any more than that. And then I'm gonna decide where I want my heart. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put part of it behind, and because I have a lamp right here, I can see through this pretty well. I wanna move it up a little bit because I don't want it right on the bottom. I can see it, you can probably not, there you go. See, you can see that there. So we're gonna get that where we want it. And then what we're going to do, and holding it up to the light really helps you do this, is we are going to take our heart and put it right, we're gonna just put it right in where we cut it out of. Just fit it right in there like a puzzle. And then set it down and give it a press. Now if your paper is very, very, very thick, you may need something to help you out. So like I have my little, this is pressing in really well because this is not real thick. But if you need to press it down, you can just press it like this, staying on your cardboard because you don't wanna rip your paper and remember you got your paper wet. And now I just did this wrong. I did it backwards because I wanted my heart to pop up. I'm pressing my heart down. Let me show you what it looks like. And there we go, we have a really nice embossed heart. And on this side, look at that. Now what am I gonna do though? I did it the wrong way because this is the edge of my pocket. I wanna be able to slide things in without ruining the paper. If I turn it over in my book, well then I'm gonna be trying to put my tags in here where it's very thin. So I'm just going to take my heart and put it on here. Turn this over and line it up. There we go. Now for me, I find it easier to press 
on this whoops this side the side with the not the side that's the side that's cut out I, I prefer to press on the shape not the other and I just did that backwards too in order to fit them together perfectly this should have been the other way around but because I cut my heart out of a piece of paper like this my heart is pretty well um, even on each side so it doesn't feel like I'm hitting the cardboard it feels like I'm fitting into the opening so I'm gonna just leave it that way but if you have something that definitely has a difference on one side like like you could make a wonky heart where one side's bigger than the other then you need to make sure that you put them in the right way just put that on there I'm gonna just press down on this and like I said be careful your paper's wet my paper is starting to dry and that's why I've come to this side um, because I could tell it wasn't pushing in as well so there we go now we have our embossed heart on the correct side this is embossing and this is called debossing so that's when it dents down embossing is when it pops up so I want to put another one right at the top of my paper so again I'm just going to quick missed on this side which I totally missed it <laughs> I keep missing it alrighty now let's do this the right way we are going to put this one on here where we want it probably right about there looking from the other side and then putting our heart in the correct way so that our pattern of the cardboard I'm going to hold it up to my light so that I can see where I'm putting it and then just set that down and press it in And again, you can massage it with something. And I was looking at this. This would make a really nice bone folder also. And the nice thing about it is it's got this hole in it. Your finger fits right in that hole and it doesn't slide out of your hand. So actually better than a regular embossing or a regular um, bone folder because you've got something really to hold on to and if you do, you think well I don't want a paintbrush for a bone folder if you have a little saw or your husband has a saw or something just cut it off right here and sand it with a fingernail um, sander so that it's not sharp and then you'll just have a really nice and it even fits nicely in your hand so there we go we'll take that off and take that off and now we have a really nice embossed heart there and there I thought about putting one in the middle but I think that I like it I like it like that maybe we'll put no you know what I am gonna put another one in the middle do it the right way put it right here hopefully that's about center looks like it's about right and then I'm going to take this making sure that we have the same color on each side hold it up to the light so that I can see and because you are pressing that paper up between the two pieces of cardboard that's why we took off that little sliver because if you don't take off that little sliver whoops um, then it makes it hard for those for the cart two pieces of cardboard to fit together because you've got paper between there and so that's why you want to take off that sliver and I'm going to show you where I messed up in just a minute not on this one but on a couple others that I was making I was actually making myself some embossing folders and I messed it up So there we go that looks good and if you think oh it's not quite pressed enough these all are but you can always just go ahead and put that back in there the way that you originally had it and do it some more so there we go now the one thing that you're going to want to do because we misted this paper is you're going to want to set this aside 
and let it let it dry because when it dries it dries pretty nice and solid but right now if I were to to squish on that now you could probably kind of squish this out but really what you've done is you've stretched that paper right there so it would be very hard to completely make that flat again and get rid of that embossed heart because now our paper is a little bit bigger it has nowhere to fit back into its original piece if that makes any sense so so long as we let these dry um those hearts are going to stay really nice like that and i don't know i'll try to get it so that you can see them all but yeah so and it does get a little wrinkly because um, because you get it wet. But this one I made really super wrinkly on purpose. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. We're going to use that as a belly band in our book. But I'm going to let that dry a little bit first before I do anything with it. And I'm going to show you some embossing folders I made. Here's one. And now with these, I used my X-Acto knife um, because I didn't want the slice in there. Now, if you did have to slice it to cut something, um, you can always put a piece of tape on that also. Um, but I used my X-Acto knife because they were straight lines. So I made this, and look at that. How perfect does that fit together? I cut out my squares, and then what I did was I took the same size piece of cardboard and just taped it with the medical tape. I just taped those two together. I had my squares still stuck in here, and then I folded it down well, wait a minute. I had my square still here. I put a little bit of glue on the back of each one, and then I folded them down, and I, you know, pressed it down and held it down, and then I held down the squares as I lifted up the front so that the glue wouldn't let go. I wanted them to stay exactly in the right spot, and I put it in a heavy book, and I let it dry with some plastic on it. The problem is I forgot to shave them. So now they fit together so tightly that trying to fit them together with a piece of paper in between it is very difficult. And you can kind of do it, but it doesn't work as well. Um, you need just that little bit shaved off. I should have taken each one of these squares. I should have I should have cut just a little bit off each one and then went ahead and put my two pieces together and just put my squares back where they belonged because they would be just a touch smaller. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it really sticks, you know, when you try and do this because it's tight. It fits together perfectly. The same thing with here. And just to make sure that I put these back in the right spot, I numbered them um, because, and that's what my embossing would look like if I had remembered to shave my cardboards just a little bit. But in doing it this way, it's just a little bit hard. You know, if my paper is wet, I can try and do it. Eh, it's kind of okay, but they really don't give me a good emboss because I really can't press them together. So this is how you make an embossing folder. You give yourself a pattern and you cut it out and then you just need another piece behind it and tape them together. But what you wanna do is make sure that you have shaved these just a little bit, put them back where they belong they're glued to the bottom piece of cardboard. And then when you put a piece of paper in there, now I can show you. Let me see, do I have a piece of paper here? So here are the squares, if you can see them. And they turned out okay. Here are the, the triangles, and they did not turn out at all. Now this is a really thin piece of paper. I, can, I did not spray it when I did it. And you only need one spray. You're hearing me spray more because I'm not pointing it in the right direction. So we could try this with a piece of wet paper. The wet, the wet really helps. It helps your paper to stretch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of make sure it's lined up well. See, they just don't fit together now that that paper's in there. That paper's just enough to hold them apart. I'm going to turn it over and press on this side because I won't rip my paper by doing that. And we will find out if wetting it helps, because like I said, I did not wet it. But see, I can tell these are not fitting together. I can tell this is standing up off of the other piece. Okay, 
Okay, now we'll lift this up. Ooh, it looks like it did press it did press it somewhat better than over here. And so there we go. Now just think how great that would look had I shaped those just a little bit. It would be a much deeper and a much better emboss. So if you want to make your own embossing folders, all you need to do, and like if this, if I wanted to make this into an embossing folder, I don't have another piece of cardboard here. I would just go ahead, pretend this is cardboard. I would go ahead and I would just tape two pieces of cardboard together like that so that I had a hinge, tape them together, put a little bit of glue on the back of my heart. Now, if you're going to glue um, this kind of cardboard that's got the shiny on it, you're going to want to make sure that you sand that just a little bit um, so that the glue has something to grab a hold of. So I'd put the two pieces like that together and then I would glue this down so that when we opened this up, that heart would be stuck on the bottom piece and the hole would be on the top piece and then they would fit back together. So that is how you make your own embossing folders. And this took quite a bit of time and I think what I may do is go in with my X-Acto knife and actually try and trim all of these down just a little bit. I haven't done that yet because I got disgusted with myself for forgetting it in the first place. Um, and I'll do the same thing with this. I'll just go with my X-Acto knife and just try and trim off a little bit of this and see if it will come off because that's going to be the other problem is, you know, I do believe I have my glue out to the edges. So even if I trim a little bit, it might be hard to get it off and it might make my paper look funny on the edges where I try to get it off. But embossing folders are cool. They take some time, but they are something once you make them, if you make them right, you can use them forever. And again, that did not turn out real bad um, with spraying the paper, and I can set that aside and let it dry. But, so that's our embossing. That is our embossing technique for today. Now we're going to use that technique, and which we already have used it on our belly band, and we are going to put this in our book. But the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to come back in a little bit and we'll put this in because I want to let this dry before I start messing with it. Now, I'm not going to do anything with this. You can, you can put some color on there if you want to. You know, there's lots of different things you can do. You can even when you're pressing them together and you have this on here and you've got your heart underneath, you know, you got your heart under there. And um, then while you've got this on here, so that you don't make a mess, um, you can do whatever you want to do to your heart at that time. If you want to color on it or anything, leave them together. And then when you remove this, everything is in your embossed spot. And by having the, the cardboard heart underneath, um, that holds that up so you're not pushing your embossing down. So that's a good way to color it. And... I'll just show you what I mean. We really should, instead of just saying it, if I can find my heart. Let's see if this is the correct heart. Yes, it is. And like I said, I'm going to set this one aside, and I'm going to come back in a minute with that, but we'll do this really quickly so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, I sprayed my paper here. I'm going to put my heart underneath. And I'm going to put this on top. Now, if you have something that's going to um, have a problem with your paper being wet, then you can leave this just like this till it dries or put it back on later after it's dry. If you don't want to do it while your paper's wet. What did I do with my paintbrush? I don't know, but I really like that paintbrush. I think it works really well. There we go. I was off a little bit right here. It was not fitting and I could tell that it wasn't pressing down. Okay, so when you've got it like this so that you're just coloring on your heart, you can go ahead and leave that together and then do whatever it is that you want to do. 
and like I said, these are watercolor markers, so if this paper was quite a bit wet, they would wick maybe possibly even down the edges and onto my paper. So I would want to do this after it was dry. You can just do it like that. See, and then when you take it off, you have your embossed heart, but you also have color on it. So in that way, or you can also just put your heart under there when you're ready to color it and color it just so you don't press down on it also. But there we go. All right, I'll be back in just a few minutes and we're gonna work on that spread in our journal. Okay, I am back and our embossing has dried. So we have that on there. I don't think I'm gonna do anything with the embossing. I, I just like the way that it, even though it doesn't show up real well in the camera, um, I do like the way that it looks. And so for right now, I have plans of just leaving it. Maybe later I'll change, but um, but for now, I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Now I've decided to put some flowers on here. I picked up some of my tall flowers and I wanted a flower. We have this where we have folded it over um, to make our, our tuck spot um, more sturdy. And so I wanna put something on this right here and I thought these tall flowers would look nice. And so I, I like the way that this one looks. I like the difference in the color there. So that one I really like. And um, I decided I kind of want to do this in oranges. And so I have this one here, but this one, in order to keep it on the actual pocket, um, it's really kind of squashing, it's really crowding um, our heart. So that one is not going to work. Because our paper is yellow, I picked this one up because it was yellow, but I don't like the red that's in there. And this one I thought was pretty because it was yellow, but it sticks out off of our pocket. And then when you go to tuck things in, you're gonna catch these spots that are sticking out. So that one's not good. This one fits very nicely, but I, out of the two, I like this one better because this one has the two tones in the flower. So that just gives a, a little bit more interest. So this is the one that I have decided that I am going to put on here like this. And then on the other side, um, I had these tall, um, I think they're called gladiolas, I'm not sure what they are, but I have these, and the purple, you know, obviously, just since I wanted to do orange, does not work. This one is kind of a corally color, which it would work, but this one looks much nicer with this, and to me it's just more um, in the yellow tones versus this one is more like to me in the pink tones. So these are the flowers I have chosen to put on the pages. And then what I'm going to do is, I love this, um, the, the background of the, oh, what do you call that? Whatever it is. I can't think of it. Well, anyways, shorthand, that's it. I love the shorthand in the background, um, but I don't like these words. I don't want this really dark to and, and this to stand out. Um, and, you know, they're going to kind of show up between, and I don't want those there. Plus the fact of I don't want to glue this on here and just have that there. I want to have like a pocket or something there. And so what I'm going to do is, because this is not, um, you know, good for writing, so I definitely, you know, I'm not going to save it as a writing page. So what I thought that I would do is... The flower is going to fit here, so I'm going to put a pocket under the flower with just with some tea dyed paper. What I'm going to do is I want my pocket to come over this far, and I want it to be up high enough to cover the top of the top of the flower there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my paper on here, making sure that I come up that high and over this far. So I'm just going to kind of set it on here, and then what I've already done is I put a mark here. I just put a mark here at the edge of my paper and a mark down here at the edge of my paper. And then I'm just going to cut that into a square. Well, I guess it's a rectangle. I'm just gonna cut that off. And come from this way so I can see better. So now we have our pocket very, very crooked. And because this is the part that I have not cut, 
I know that, that, that those corners are straight, so I'm gonna line those up with the edge of my book, or the edge of my page. And actually what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this part of our signature out, get rid of this, just so there's not as much bulk to work with. And so this I'm gonna put here, like that. It's going to have our flower on top of it, like this. Oh, and actually I didn't get it quite tall enough, but that's all right. Oh, and I want this to be over right to the edge, towards the edge. So I'm gonna put this like this. And so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this back here. so that I have a nice tucking um, area so that it makes it more sturdy. And then I'm going to fold it back here, right over to here. I'm gonna take that flower out now. I know I have to fold it to there. I'm gonna line up my bottom so that I know that my line is pretty straight. And so that's gonna be our pocket. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold it the other way so that that folded part is on the inside so that you don't see it. So we're going to just fold it like that. So this is going to then be our pocket or our tuck spot, whatever you want to call it. And this is going to be on here like this. And there we go. That's how it's going to look. So now what do we want to do with that before we glue the flower on? And I think for sure we kind of want to edge it a little bit in orange and maybe have a little, just a little bit of background behind it. And so just like I have to grab a sponge Excuse me. Okay, so I've got a sponge, and then I'm going to put a little bit of our orange marker. This is just a plastic lid off of oatmeal. Grandpa loves oatmeal, so I have a ton of these lids. And I'm going to just spray a little bit of water on there. And actually, I think I sprayed too much water, so I'm going to put a little bit more color with that and of course it doesn't like the water and then we're just going to pick up some of that with our sponge and just edge our paper just a little bit with that orange now if I wanted I could just use the actual marker and put it on there but I like the, it's a little more muted if you do it this way. It's not so just bright and in your face. Just use all of it that I have there on the edge. I'm gonna need just a little bit more. taking a minute for that color to get back out there because when I colored on the water the marker sucked the water up into the pen and made it much lighter now just make just a little tiny bit of water I'm gonna there we got a drip of water just gonna take that just kind of mix it a little bit I'm kind of mixing it before I touch it with my sponge because otherwise my sponge will pick up the, the bright orange of the marker, not the muted orange of the wetted down marker. So there we go. That will definitely should give us enough to, to finish here. I need to do this edge a little bit more, I think. And I like to kind of come, not just get the edge, but kind of come up on the paper just a touch.
And there we go. We have a really nice muted orange there. And that will make it stand out from the paper behind it so that when we put it on there, now that looks a lot better being able to see that. Maybe I need a little bit more orange up here. Let's see if I have a, li a little bit left. There we go. Well, that's better. Okay, so now we have that and we have this and do we need any more? I actually was going to put a little bit of background stamping on there, but I really like the way that this looks, so we're going to leave it just like that. And just glue that right on there. And then we'll glue the pocket down. Oops, a little bit of glue there. So I'm just going to put some glue on here. Whoops. And then I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper hold it down really well so it's not moving so that you don't get the glue on the top and I am just going to spread this all the way out to all of those little bits I don't want them hanging out without being glued down and then take the possibility of them getting all folded over and everything. So I have glue all over the back. And now we are going to just put this on here like this. Give it a good press. Oh, I think that that is beautiful. I really like that. And maybe I might eventually want to do something out there, but right now I really don't want to. I like the looks of that, so I'm going to leave that, and I'm going to glue my pocket down. I never even glued these, I never glued the folds down. I really need to do that, don't I? Just a little bit of, it doesn't need a whole lot of glue. here and that's so that when if you put something in the pocket and something goes all the way down in the pocket it when you try and get it out it's not going to get stuck on those so you just need to get the edge so that nothing gets stuck on it let's give it a good press and then we're just going to glue the pocket across the bottom and the outside edge And because it takes me a long time to decorate, we're not going to make tags for these today, but we'll make tags for them another day. Some kind, something to tuck into the pocket. Just want to line it up really well at the bottom. And on the side. extra glue off there so it's not shiny when it dries. I don't remember if tacky glue dries shiny or not. And so there we go. Now we have a really nice tuck spot there that we can use to tuck something into. And I like the way that looks. And again, as far as the background goes, when you tuck something in there, that's going to cover up the background anyways. So I don't know I, I don't, I, I'm not a big one on completely covering up what I already have there because that's what I chose to have there. Now sometimes I do, I do cover it all up, but sometimes I just prefer to not have, you know, I mean, what was the point of putting it there and having that paper if I'm going to completely cover it up? And that's just for me. Now on here, there's a blue spot that's really bothering me. I don't like that blue spot. It's just bugging the heck out of me. So I need to remove it. And I also think that I want to put some background stamping on this part of, of the page, especially since I am not going to do anything with here. I want to do something with this fold over part, and I want to do something with this out here. 
Now I'm going to, so that I know how far I need to, to do the background stamps, I'm going to kind of lift this up a little bit and kind of just go like this, make a line. And that way I know if I do my background stamping to that line, it will go underneath my pocket a bit. There's no point in background stamping the whole thing because you're not going to see what's under here. And um, But in order to cover that up, just the marker like we did here is not going to work. The marker is see-through and we need something that's not see-through. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set my flower aside, set all that outside, and we are going to use a little bit of paint. And we, we only need just a little bit. The more paint you have, the more marker you're going to need. So you don't want to run your marker out. And I'm just going to put a drop of paint on there, maybe two drops. And then I'm going to make an opaque color for this edge here. And I'm just going to scribble my marker on here. Do not touch your paint because you don't want to get that paint on your on the tip of your marker. If you do, that would be a bad thing. So that, that will not work out well. So because that paint, instead of drying, like the, the water might suck up in here and eventually take a little bit to to go ahead and get your color to come back out, but it's just water. There's water in these markers. If you get the acrylic paint on your marker, what's going to happen is you are going to, it's gonna dry on your marker tip. And, and so that would not be a good thing. So I'm getting close. I want a lot of color here because that was quite a bit of paint. And this is going to be really light when we mix it with the huh. oh there it is i was gonna say i thought i had my paintbrush in there so now i'm just going to take my white paint and mix it with the orange marker you can mix it really 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 well or you can leave it a little bit like darker in spots and lighter in spots so that when you pick it up you might get a two-tone so now we have a really nice peach colored um, paint and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my brush to cover up that blue and there's a little bit of blue here too And hopefully whatever it is does not suck through my paint. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a piece of scrap paper to make a background stamp. And I'm going to take the, I'm going to fold it kind of in the middle so that I have little edges sticking up that are the edges of the paper. that and now this is going to make a really big like fold and I really don't want a really big fold so I'm going to kind of rip that off of there and I'm just going to take this I'm going to cover up my hearts the part of paper that I do not want color on I'm going to cover that up and then I'm just going to take this and I'm going to dab it in my paint and then dab it on my little edge here. And you can also do this just with the watered down, um, with your watered down marker also. And that just gives a really nice backing for our flower so that it's not just flat yellow. Now while I've got a little bit of paint left, this is our page we're working on, I might as well put a little bit of that out here. I'm almost out so I want to make sure that I spread it around. that and 
then I am going to use a little bit of the orange marker, not getting it where my paint was. And this will be brighter because we didn't mix it with the white paint. I'm just going to put a little drip of water on there. Oh, that was way too much. Grab a napkin and soak a bunch of that up. Now I probably soaked up too much, but let's see. Let's get that water to go down there. Let me do it like this. I'll take this off and just let it drip on there. Like that. Mix the um, the ink and the water together. And I'm going to use my same little stamp here. I'm going to rough it up a little bit. so that I get a different bit of texture. Make sure you get over to the edge of your page. You know, when they get folded in there, it's not as noticeable, but just in case it is it shows you don't want to be a, a straight line there where you didn't have any color. And so that gives us a nice background there. Let's take this away. Make sure you have water for your paintbrush so you don't let it sit there and get ruined. And then this is going to fit on here like this. And our flower is going to go on here like that. And I'm thinking that I want a little bit of the orange on here also. I had to do the opaque because I could cover up the blue, but I do want just a little bit of orange. So I'll put a drip of water on here. Yeah, this just seems a little bit too light to me. And so, I will find what I did with my orange marker. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, here it is, found it. You were probably saying, you sent it over there next to the table. Okay, add orange, and let's get the water mixed in. Maybe I'll hold this on here. And I want it mostly up here at the top because the flower is covering up the bottom. Yeah, I like that better. That peach was just a little bit too light for me. We'll use up all the color I have because I'm not going to do anything here right now. I might find something to do with it later, but I don't want the page too busy. And, and busy is all in the eye of the beholder. So if you like to have a lot on there, you can go ahead and do that. So that one's going to go right there. And I like the looks of that. Just get some glue on here. Get that all spread around, hold it down nice and solid. Come down and get that spot where I was holding it.
and give it a good press. And I do like how we have the color here and then no color here with the embossing on it. So then we're just going to, this is a side tuck, so we're going to glue the three sides. Not, not our folded side. I'm lining it up just with a little bit of the page sticking out the edge so that you can see the tear that we made with our tear ruler. Give it a good press. Pressing the glue towards the outside so that um, we don't squish it up into our pocket and make our pocket smaller. And then just get that little bit of extra glue off of there. So there we go, and that's what that one looks like. So let's put it back together. Let's see. This one goes here. And put it right back in the book. That goes there. So now in this signature, we have this spread ready to go and I think that that turned out really nicely I like the way that that looks and now we've added in one of the pockets or tucks that we made originally a while back we've got another one added over here so on some day when we do some tags or some little things to tuck in we'll go ahead and make something to go with this page and put it in there so thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this process today. I really do appreciate you stopping by. Stay safe, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.